One of my favorite topics is the idea of neuroplasticity, the brain's capacity to shift and change across the course of our lives. But have you ever heard of stress-induced structural plasticity? This is neuroplasticity that is informed and guided by stressful and traumatic experiences. It's the exact same thing as neuroplasticity except it's based in creating schemas or frameworks that are focused on stress, trauma, traumatic encodings, and how our brain has learned to survive. Stress-induced structural plasticity creates the stories that our brain links into in moments of anxiety, and when we have a trauma trigger, when we're depressed. It's the meaning-making of how our brain helps us make sense of the world. Stress-induced structural plasticity happens in, of course, our little friend Amy the amygdala. And it's actually linked into a very specific nuclei there that then tags and strengthens bonds with our hippocampus and says, hey, little memory center over there, you need to remember this narrative story about this hard, painful, or difficult thing. And because our amygdala is always focused on our survival, it's recruiting other brain parts as well as our hippocampus to help create a narrative going forward. And all of that then circles up to our thinking brain that then feeds down into our sense of self, our sense of safety, lovability, and success. Those three core amygdala values. So if we have experienced childhood trauma, if we've experienced chronic stress, if we've experienced a traumatic event in our adulthood, then there's a good chance that stress-induced structural plasticity exists. And of course, the earlier the stressful events, the more stress-induced structural plasticity we may have. When my patients talk to me about their maladaptive or negative cognitions, the mean ways they talk to themselves, how they beat themselves up and those labels, those are a fine indicator of this concept. In the previous video, I talked about Emily's, the event, meaning, landscape, and sense of inescapability that is required for our brain to say, this experience is traumatic enough that I'm going to remember it forever. And when something is stressful enough, but it does not meet those four criteria, that is a hotbed for the development of CISP. So how do we protect ourselves against CISP, stress-induced structural plasticity? Well, resilience, self-care, taking part in your own resilient brain care program. And of course, there's a link below to a video where we talk all about how to build that. And this is why self-care is actually very important for healing and also personal empowerment. It's not just a cliche phrase out in popular media. It's a very real thing because if our landscape of our brain, the electrochemical activity, the way our brain is functioning in any given moment is resilient enough, then our brain will not be permissive for linking into and encoding and holding on to those experiences. We don't have that feedback loop of the stress, the firing and wiring of those neurons going, oh, we need to remember this forever and ever, because instead our brain's like, oh, that was really hard, and I've got this. So resilience is a really critical part. Now, this entire series is focused on trauma, and right now we're navigating through the baseline constructs of what happens in our brain as it's building this case for trauma to ensure our survival. So we have the Emily, those four things to create a traumatic encoding. And now we've deepened that into the stress-induced structural plasticity, the framing, the way our brain is firing and wiring together, whether there is a traumatic encoding and also after the traumatic encoding. And so in the next video, we're going to dig in deeper into this case for trauma. How does our brain tag all of these different stimuli, whether or not we've had an Emily or a CISP experience 
as something that our brain is now going to say when that may possibly be in the environment. And for those of you who've ever been triggered emotionally, you know what I'm talking about. It's almost like a sixth sense. Our brain's going, oh, that may be there. That is the case for trauma and survival. So stay tuned for that video, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Oh, <laughs>